what we wanted to talk about this evening is Facebook is a tool for journalists, that we know we're working with many folks in this room and learning from you, that we've, for the past several months, been in a way on a listening tour and understanding how do you use Facebook to advance your story, how do you use it to drive traffic to your sites. We wanted to share a little bit tonight about what we learned and how we think about it, and I hope you like that middle screen, because it looks like that screen's having some more trouble. So, in about 10 minutes, I wanted to focus on <laughs> I wanted to provide a brief overview of Facebook, of where we are today and how we think it, how we think about Facebook generally, our strategy, and how it might impact your lives as journalists and reporters and content owners. The second thing is I wanted to talk very practically about some of the benefits and what you could start doing today to dive, drive distribution, to get more engagement from your audience, to be helpful in the reporting that you do, and also in crowdsourcing. And finally, I wanted to leave with getting started before turning it over to Levi. Levi. So with that said, Facebook currently has over 500 million users. Over 200 million people access Facebook each month by mobile device. And we know that's kind of really important, particularly for this audience, given how much mobile is emerging as a tool for reporting and for journalists. But what's really interesting about Facebook is, in a way, it gives you the ability to have news powered by people or people-powered news. Because when you look at our audience, on average, a Facebook user has 130 friends. So when I publish something to my Facebook news feed, on average it's hitting 130 people. And over 50% of these people come back every single day. So if you think of our over 500 million users, that means over 250 million people interact with Facebook daily. For a reporter, we think that creates a lot of opportunities. And at the core of what Facebook is about is it's about real identity. When you think, for instance, about me and you, and I'm seeing in the audience many of the folks who look closely. But when I type in Facebook.com and Randy types in Facebook.com, though we both typed in an identical URL, we're having a fundamentally different experience. And the reason we're having a different experience is because we have different friends and we have different interests. Take, for instance, me. I have a bunch of friends there, ranging from Zuck to Anika to various other folks, but also care about a bunch of different things. I'm a New Orleans Saints fan, which makes this a little bit of a painful time of year. <laughs> so I came to Seattle last weekend. I like Green Day. I work at Facebook. Randy's in kind of a different thing. I doubt you're a New Orleans Saints fan. I bet you're a San Francisco Giants fan, if I remember correctly. You work at the Bay Area News Group. And because of that, when we both type in Facebook, we're having a different experience. That, as a journalist, creates really interesting <coughs> possibilities. A really interesting opportunity to interact with your audience and also use Facebook to advance your story. And so that, in a very brief 10-minute presentation, with a lot more information online, is what I wanted to talk a little bit about tonight. The first benefit of Facebook is distribution. And I assure you, if you could read down the slide, there's more great stats. But since we launched these social plugins at F8, the average media organization that's implemented them has seen an overall 100% increase in referral traffic from Facebook, with a lot of really impressive results from specific organizations. The Washington Post, for instance, has seen a 280% increase. The Independent blogged last week that they've seen over 600%. And there are many other really meaningful increases that the organizations have seen. So the question is how and why. Why have they seen that? I know many of you have probably played around. How many um, folks in the room have a website that's implemented the like button? Fantastic. And so basically, when you think about the like button, and I'm going to have to ad-lib this a little bit because we're losing a bit of the slide, you can think about it in a couple of different ways. You can implement the like button that helps you share. So this will help you kind of share with those 130 people. When I click like, 130 friends of mine know about it. But the other thing that it can do is form a lasting connection. And this, for journalists in the room, I think is really interesting. You can click like to follow a journalist. So for instance, the independent just implemented on the right-hand side of the the left-hand side of the screen, the ability to follow Robert Fisk and really subscribe to his commentation, the commentary he provides. Equally, you can follow a topic. On the right-hand side of the screen, you have the Boston Globe's front page of their sports section, where when you like the Boston Globe, you now follow their sports coverage and see whatever they do. And so when a, leader, when a reader clicks like, what happens? Well, first, it does publish a story to 130 people. But equally, something else really interesting happens. It gives you the ability to publish to them. And as a people that produce content, and as journalists, I think that's really powerful. Because it forms a lasting connection between you and your audience and you and your reader. 
The final thing it does is it adds to discoverability. So when I like the sports coverage on the Boston Globe, or I like Robert Fisk, when another user shows up to my profile, they see that I do. And when they click on that, it takes them to Robert Fisk, or it takes them to the sports section of the Boston Globe. That creates a lot of potentially pretty powerful opportunities for the folks in this room. So when we think about distribution, we have some very practical advice. The first is create a page for your publication. You're soon going to hear from Andy about one of the best ways to use a page. How many folks in the audience have pages for their publications? Cool. So that's kind of step one. And then the, the thing that Andy is going to provide some advice on is how you use the page and use it to engage an audience and drive really meaningful distribution from it. But the second thing that's really interesting for those of you who are journalists in the room is create a page for yourself. How many folks here are journalists? I saw kind of mixed during the cocktail hour. Great. How many of you have pages for yourself? So like that's kind of, I don't know, it looked like about a third or so. I was a little skewed towards this side of the room, so it may have looked a little better. But we're seeing some really interesting examples of people using the pages for themselves to engage with their audience, but also to drive really meaningful traffic. One very interesting example of folks that do it is Nick Kristoff of the New York Times. I encourage you to go to his page and see how he engages his audience, how he uses it to advance the story, but also very practically to drive traffic. So that's distribution. The second benefit that we think, as we think about the workflow of a journalist, is the ability to engage your audience and interact with your readers. Once you have a page, which is the first step, the question is what you do with it. I'm going to be very brief here because I think Andy really is best in class at NPR doing this and will provide a lot of really good insights in it. But if you look at what National Geographic does or you look at what ESPN does, on this example, ESPN is asking a question. They're creating a poll and they're saying, what happens? The NPR is saying, learn more by joining a live event. This is the type of thing that pages allow you to do, to really engage with your audience and engage with your readers. The third thing that we've seen very interesting innovation, particularly over the last kind of three to six months, is using Facebook as a reporter to advance your story. How many of you saw this story in the Washington Post, probably a couple months back, on a mother's sorrow? I thought it was fascinating. That basically, it's, it's a harrowing read, that it's a story of a woman who gets quite ill and kind of goes through her, her status updates and kind of the relationship with the family, and then does a bunch of call-outs to give more content on her life, and it has a tragic ending. But I think that's a really interesting early example of the potential Facebook has as a journalist to create new stories and find new content and really advance it. We've seen another really interesting example of reporting from the field. Now, the Base Track project is a really interesting project where some journalists are embedded on the front lines in Afghanistan. And what they use the Facebook page to is to report from the front lines, primarily through photos and other content. But what they've also found is fascinating is an entire community is developed around it, where a lot of the content is actually, at this point, being sourced by not just the reporters, but by the families and the friends of the, of the soldiers in the field. And we think that's another interesting example that Basetrack has done to use Facebook pages and tools within the life of a reporter. The final thing that we wanted to talk about a bit was about crowdsourcing. And this is just one example from Katie Couric of how you can use Facebook for crowdsourcing. But it's really engaging your audience meaningfully. It's asking them questions and soliciting opinion and using it really in the journalistic flow. I actually think that there are many folks in this room that I know are actually doing this particularly well. And we'd love to learn from you. What are some of your best practices? What works in engaging your audience? And what's a little less effective? In addition within crowdsourcing, I wanted to call attention to this interesting thing we've recently set up called Facebook Stories. And in Facebook Stories, we think we've created a trove of information that allows uh, people on Facebook to express what Facebook means to them and some of the experiences they've had. This, we also think, can potentially become a pretty interesting journalistic tool. So for instance, on the, le on the left hand side of the slide, you have a person that formed an entire group around Pearl Jam. And actually using the Facebook, uh, Facebook shared why this was a really powerful tool. We think if you go into this, there may be some very interesting applications because you can also sort them by theme and location. So knowing that there's a West Coast chapter, doing a sort to find it can potentially be another interesting way to advance your story. So that's kind of a very quick overview of the potential of Facebook. Now, the final thing I want to leave is just two simple slides getting started. We think there are three things you can do today. For the folks in this room that are journalists that don't have a page, 
we'd really encourage you to check it out. It's a really powerful way to kind of connect with your readership. And just a quick clarification on pages versus profile. If you think of your personal Facebook account when you kind of communicate with friends, that is a private profile that you kind of, you have control to do what you want with. A page is public. What it allows people to do is to follow you and to follow your coverage and to follow your stories and to follow your columns and to follow your stories. And we think folks like Nick Kristoff are leading the way in showing the potential to use pages. The second thing is once you set up a page, engage your fans. Ask them what they think of an issue. Ask them what they think of a story. And we think there are really interesting examples. And I know Levy and Andy are going to share some of their experiences there. The third thing to do is to set up your mobile advices, both to access and also to publish to. Now, publishing to Facebook is actually remarkably easy. And if you're having any issues at all, we actually have a team in the room tonight that works with media organizations. Nick Rudin and Andy Mitchell, both are based out of our New York office, as well as Mallory and Jillian from our broader team, that can actually give a lot of advice on how to use it. The final thing I'd encourage you to do, if you haven't done it already, is to check out our media page. What we do on this page at facebook.com slash media is publish interesting things that we're seeing going on, whether it's emerging best practices or other ways to use the tool. And we're using this as a source both to kind of share what we're learning from you, but also to get your input. So basically, what I'm asking tonight in the cocktail hour Q&A, if you're seeing interesting stuff, if you're seeing stuff that's working, by the way, if you're seeing stuff that's not working and stuff we can do better, please share it with us. We want to learn from you. And with that, it's